This bike performed horribly. Spoiler alert, have you ever wondered what you're really buying? Well, this guy did. He has a Built Racing 290 kit on this bike, a piggyback fuel tuner, and he thought it ran pretty darn good. He liked the improvements that it made over the stock motorcycle for him for his application, which happens to be off-road riding. I got the bike in here to improve that tune-up. We're gonna put a Git ECU on the bike, and I've already done all this work, and I wanted to showcase a lot about what we do when we tune and how you have to go about building a bike like this to get the best results out of it you possibly can. Guess below what kind of power it makes in tune form and guess below what kind of power it made as it came in because we're gonna blow your guys' minds. Now, we're also gonna show you how we go about tuning a bike like this. So let me walk you through that real quick. So first up, let's show you guys how this bike runs on the stock ECU with the piggyback fuel tuner. And I'll walk you through that here in a second. Let me click this in and let me walk you through how the piggyback works. All right, all clicked back up. We've got the standard fuel injection supply power wire into this Y cable. The Y cable goes up to the piggyback tuner and then it has an interrupt and it supplies this cable here with the new suggested fuel amount. And what you can do is make it richer or leaner from what the standard one supplies. We have nothing to do with this particular tune-up, so how it runs is how this uh, company has set it up, and we'll show you that I'll right start. now. time for some dyno charts. This is how that stock ECU runs. That is exactly how it feels when you ride it. It kind of comes on okay, and then it just really can't get out of its own way, and then it picks back up and then signs off. But let's look at the power here. Peak power of about, oh, 34 if we're lucky. 34 horsepower over here. Peak torque close to 20 foot-pounds, which is quite good. That's about where a 250 should be as a 250 and peak torque's at a reasonable RPM number. It's you know below 8,500, around 8,500. The power curve on this engine is atrocious, as we showed you. We've done a little bit of quick tuning with the Git. Uh, we've built quite a few big bores in the past. We have our own big bore kit for this bike, a 270 kit, that absolutely is decimating what this package makes. So we're five to seven horsepower better than what we're seeing currently, which has me wondering with the huge hole in the power that we showed you, Maybe the cam timing's off, and so before we do a lot of tuning, let's check that out. Yeah, boys, shoot. Cam timing is good, verified rep TDC. So currently, this thing's just a dog. We're gonna rework the tune now, now that I'm confident that the cam timing's right. Um, now we'll get to hard work on the tune up and kind of see what's going on there. And maybe, just maybe, it's that far off that the power is as bad as we show, but um, I don't know. So how do you know what your tune-up's doing? Well, that's the important part. That's where the dyno comes in. You see, the dyno doesn't lie to us. It tells us how much power the bike's making. Then we can compare that to the tune-up changes that we made and collected data on to see what works best. For that reason, you have to have both, the performance metrics of the bike and output, as well as the data collection so you know what you're doing. Oftentimes, if you don't have both integrated together, you're gonna really struggle to find a good tune-up. Additionally, we have to use our own subjective feelings. What is a throttle response like? What does it do when you whack the throttle? How crisp and clean is it? These are factors that are very important to a motocross rider or a trail rider. If you don't get certain things right, those factors suffer a little bit. And for you motocross guys, 90% of the time, what you judge a bike on has nothing to do with performance and everything to do with that crispness, that throttle response. Even if your bike is slower in a drag race, you guys would prefer the crispier setting, usually on a 250. It's kind of funny to me, but that's the nature of the world.
We've got a pipe on it that has a Lambda sensor installed, an O2 wideband down here. We've got a very special Git data acquisition system on the bike up here. We just got it rigged up for the dyno purposes. We've got our Git ECU installed in the bike and we connect it all. This is a power cable to power up the Lambda box and then it all talks to the data logger. We then use our dyno to load the bike and get various throttle positions and RPMs. And then we collect data. So let's walk you through our tuning process. We're gonna fire the bike up. We've got all of our data collection all hooked up. Let her get warm. While it's warming up, we can collect data on how the air-fuel ratios respond versus the coolant temperature. This is one area that you need to tune within the ECU. So we like to collect data from the second it's fired up and cold all the way till when we get it hot. This takes a long time because you have to let the bike cool off every time in order to collect that data. So here we are letting it get some throttle response and let you hear that. Now we're going to go ahead and get on the bike and start loading it. And what we will do here is load it at various throttle positions and RPMs. The goal here is to collect air fuel data at every throttle position and RPM that we can. And then where we find areas that are extremely wrong based off of our history of knowledge, we will go correct that in our map. This process takes a little while because sometimes it's so far out of whack that you're gonna have to make a couple stabs at it to get it right. After you get the air fuel ratio pretty close, then you have to go in and optimize timing and then reevaluate your air fuel ratios based upon potential changes that occur from your timing. Time to blast it. Let's see what she does wide open. All right, let's kind of show you what we do when we tune. <clears throat> this is an example of a wide open blast on this bike. And so we're here. We tip into it, you can see the air-fuel ratio up there in the light blue, so air-fuel ratio right there. Here's the uh, throttle position here in red, okay, and then we have RPM in green. This tone of technician's going on right now. We have all sorts of stuff, but this page I use for this type of stuff. So when you hit the gas right over here, you can see the air-fuel ratio goes lean for a second. Lean is upwards, richer is downwards, and then we have a, a, just a generic target here on the purple line. So it goes lean and then it comes right where we were targeting in this particular instance. And then you can see right here at about 6,000 and then 6,500, it goes pretty lean, um, very, very lean in, in for our standards, although not dangerous or anything, but, and then it comes kind of back in a line and, and follows what we're kind of shooting for. And what we're doing here is we just have a generic target. This gives us some calculation purposes in here, but then we just try to find best power. And so you can see where we dip off a little leaner and a little richer and then a little leaner and then a little back richer as the RPMs are climbing. This is what we found to work best for this bike. Now right here, we need to richen it up and work on that area. And that's what this tuning does. So we first go collect all our data. Then we make as many changes as we can see and make. And then we go rerun it and retest. So uh, let's show you some part throttle stuff. So we go through here in the part throttle area, right? And what you're doing is then here at 12% throttle, you know, we're looking at the air fuel ratio over there or we blipped into it. Now, anytime you blip into the throttle, you're gonna go a little lean and there's no way around that. Uh, for those like right here, you go from here to blip and you see a quick lean blip and then it comes back down. Um, you will always have that quick lean blip, but a lot of you guys with air fuel ratio meters don't ever see this because your response time's not quick enough and your data logging system's not quick enough. And then, um, so we're just doing steady state testing at low throttle openings, 14.5% throttle. And picking the air fuel ratio you want here is determined by how much power output the bike has, the throttle response, how it's running, if you want mileage, if you don't want mileage, if you want all the power, you don't want all the power. That's what you're doing here in the tuning. So we'll go through all these throttle positions and RPMs and try to collect as much data as possible. And then when we're done, we go edit and then we retest and retest until we hit our targets, hit our power goals, and make everything the best it can be for our client. All right, guys, this will be our final tune-up. This is the exhaust that he runs, the insert he runs, and uh, we've got the tune-up dialed in. Let's show you what it sounds like. It's real quiet with this pipe compared to before. It's got an insert in it.
let's go to the chart versus our Git ECU. And let me pop that up right there for you guys. Boom! Look at that. Smooth, more horsepower, more torque. Absolutely everything's better about it. Let's throw the torque curve up there for you guys. So here's the torque curves. As you can see, that's what it looks like. Most people don't understand this, but torque and horsepower are correlated. If I show you a horsepower curve, you should know the torque curve if you do a little math. And if I show you a torque curve, you should do and know the horsepower curve if you do a little math. But look at the difference. We're peaking here close to 40, just shy of 40, 39.60. And the other one's at 30, I'm coming up with 33 and change here on this smooth version. So we got more gains everywhere. I'm going to go back. And let's get rid of the torque just so we can really look at this off the bottom. Huge improvements from bottom to top, smooths the power curve out. And more importantly, at all of the part throttles that we've been working on, it's just better. Every single category about this is better. A stock 250, let's throw that up on here. So this is the unfortunate side of this particular build is that unfortunately, here is a 2021 250F MAP2 pump gas here in green. So not quite what this big bore makes on the front side, but pretty much the same peak horsepower. Well, what'd you guys think? I think this is a great video. Shows you a lot about what you have to do to maximize the performance of anything you build. Whether it's a mod bike, whether it's a stock bike, whether it's a big bore, whether it's a stroker, you have to accurately tune your ECU to get performance out of that motorcycle. Luckily, for this particular customer, the way that he rides is hardly ever at wide open throttle. In fact, he's probably rarely above half throttle. And luckily for him, the tune-up that was supplied to him was functional enough for up to about half throttle. The partial throttles, getting acceleration enrichments, deceleration fuel changes, uh, all of those things sorted out for this different engine configuration so that this guy can go out and ride the bike and know that it's always gonna be there when he hits the gas. He had some complaints about the flame out and stalling, and because of that, he was one of the reasons that he brought it here to the shop. So we're excited to offer this ECU up to him so that he gets maximum performance. Now, he also will have the ability, if he wants, to have a Wi-Fi communication box. This box allows you to make smartphone tuning changes so you can fine tune that delivery to suit your needs. We're gonna put Map 2 in the box a little bit different, a lot smoother than Map 1, and I say smoother as in far less powerful so that the bike is much more manageable for the really technical trails. But he can always switch to map one when he wants all the power that the bike has to offer. That'd be a really fun bike to ride. It's got a full recluse. He's got a full Yoast system on it with an insert. It's a fairly quiet pipe. I give them a lot of credit for making a pipe that produces incredibly good power and has very nice sound uh, output. It's not very loud, so you can go ride the bike a lot. That pipe actually tested better than the other pipe we had on the bike that's free flowing and very, very loud. So very good combination for this motorcycle on that pipe. So what'd you guys think? Leave a comment below, like, subscribe. I'm Derek Harris here at HP Race Development. I'll see you guys next time.